All right, guys, we may have bit off more than we can chew with this one. We've got an F550 Lariat right behind me, and it is prepped to become a 6x6. Now, I know there's lots of 6x6s out there. There's the uh, Sparks Boater 6x6. There's the Hennessy 6x6. There's the Skeeter Brush Truck 6x6. This isn't gonna be like any other 6x6 that you've ever seen built before. We have already cannibalized a two and a half ton Rockwell axle. We've got the third member out of it. And uh, we'll catch you up to speed on how we're gonna be using that. But like I said, this is gonna be a unique 6x6 that you've never seen built before. Custom front suspension, custom rear suspension, custom axles, custom everything. And we're gonna cover it right here on the Jackknife Motors channel. Make sure you stay tuned, like and subscribe. We got a lot of work to do. I'm out of breath, let's go. What we have here is a 2023 F550. She's a big dog. Um, what we're doing with this truck is we're building it into pretty much the ultimate work truck. I mean, we've built some big work trucks before, four wheel drive, big tires, big beds, big cranes, but they're always at their limit basically. So this one, we're gonna throw another axle in it. So it's gonna have major payload capacity, um, and it's just gonna be huge. Uh, we're pairing up with Napide. They're gonna be building a custom bed for a six by six for us. Um, we're gonna be running probably big Continentals, maybe big Michelins, I'm not sure what we're going with yet. We're gonna be running anywhere from like a 41 to a 43 inch tire. Don't know 100% what we're going with yet. Kind of still feeling all that out. What I do know is the truck's gonna be getting uh, dual parallel four links for the back. We're gonna end up uh, running a uh, intermediate axle with a pass through, which a little different than a lot of the six by sixes lately. Um, also, we'll have a Super 60 front. Uh, we're gonna be doing gears, we're gonna be doing lockers, we're gonna be doing huge tires, as well as huge bed, huge crane, Miller Impact. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. What the guys are doing today is they're basically stripping everything down and getting it bagged and tagged. TJ's clearing off all the brackets off the frame. He's pulling back all the wiring, all the plumbing everything off the rear frame rails because what we're going to end up doing um, on the fabrication side is we're going to end up building a uh, frame overlay plate that just encapsulates the factory frame and then we bolt it along all the way down the frame rails and what this allows us to do is just to have a basically a, a stronger frame structure for one and then we also get to weld everything up on the table and then come over and bolt all our brackets and stuff to the truck itself um, so TJ is going to be getting everything prepped for us to start building that. Meanwhile, Sam is going to be t working on the rear axle and then the front axle. What he's going to start with on the rear axle, he's going to remove all the brackets to where basically all we have is a center section, bare axle tubes, and then uh, caliper brackets. And that's all we want. Everything else, the leaf perches, the factory shock mounts, the factory sway bar mount, all that stuff goes away so we can add our four link brackets. So we have a factory Ford axle here. This is what comes in these F550s. Um, we're getting another one. We're getting a matching axle to this one. That's gonna be hub to hub. It's gonna have brakes, axle shafts, all that stuff. What we're gonna end up doing though is we're gonna end up gutting that, taking the axle tubes out of the center section, uh, taking the hubs out, taking the brakes, taking everything off, and we're gonna go to uh, Boyce Equipment in Ogden. And we're gonna get an actual Rockwell pass through center section which is like a top loader diff and we're going to end up building a hybrid axle we're going to build a axle that utilizes the uh, hubs and everything off the 550 but you 
also uses the center section from the Rockwell diff. What that's gonna give us is a pass-through axle, and then it's gonna give us the same parts as far as hubs and brakes go. So if we have to worry about like service in the future, we can just get all the same part numbers and everything else for all four of our rear brake assemblies or hub assemblies. Um, it's gonna be a little bit of a work because we're gonna to have to design this Rockwell center section into uh, new axle tubes. The Rockwell is actually using square uh, axle tubes. We're gonna end up using round ones. So the plate structure is gonna get a little wild to do this. Also, we have to have custom axle shafts made for the pass-through axle just because the center section is going to use a bigger or uh, a different diameter and spline count for axle shafts. So, yeah, well, we don't have an axle, so we're going to have to head on over to Ogden right now to Boyce Equipment, and we'll see if we can find that Rockwell center section over there. They have a ton of stuff on the ground, so Ogden's probably, what, like a 45-minute drive from here? Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. I got something else I gotta do in Ogden too. I gotta drop a truck off at a shop. Okay. A shop so you can diagnose. This is a personal truck of mine. Two so birds, one stone. Two birds, one stone. Okay. I'll throw it on the hauler and then uh, we'll drive up there. It's, the okay. shop's right next to Boyce. So. Yeah. That Two birds, one stone. I can't wait to see what Aaron's talking about here. I can kind of imagine what he's saying, but uh, it's gonna be a little bit of a Frankenstein axle. Okay. I don't wanna, <laughs> I don't wanna go the other way. The other way I hope it works too, man. <laughs>section currently cracking that drain plug loose so we can flip it over make sure there's no fluid we're not going to spill everywhere you know if you're going to work gotta make sure the workplace stays clean so i don't want to be working in a puddle we're going to flip this bad boy over drain it get that midsection pulled off start cleaning it up make it look all nice and pretty get that other uh, axle from coming from ford and we'll get her get her going you know oh yeah get her going, oh yeah baby. Crazy binding up. When we're looking at the teeth, we can see here really nice wear mark, nothing crazy. Had a little bit of water in it, which is fine, nothing crazy. We'll clean it up, put some nice clean fluid in it. We can see here that it's wearing nice and even on the teeth. It's not riding too high, it's not running too low, it's not left or right, it's just right where we want it. So that's great to see that. We're still probably going to be changing up the gear ratio on it anyway, but it's nice to see that that signs of life on it are still good. Fluid was really dirty. There's a little bit of shavings, which is kind of okay, you know. It happens once in a while, but nothing crazy to where we didn't see any chunks or anything, you know, no teeth sitting in the bottom of it or anything like that. So we're good signs of that and we'll Clean her all up and then we'll get the new gearing in it and we'll get it going, you know. Alright, so now that this is out and cleaned up, we need to figure out how to get this into computer land. 
And I'm not gonna sit there and draw the entire thing. I think I'm gonna make some phone calls, see if I can find somebody to 3D scan it. And then I'll clean up the dimensions on the scan file. And then uh, we'll draw a custom center section. We'll fabricate it, slide the axle tubes in, slide a lineup bar through it. And we're gonna be building ourselves a custom axle housing. Um, it's pretty exotic stuff. This is pretty cool. We'll see how it turns out though. Exotic. What else do we need? Nice. Exotic. exotic. Yeah. Kind of like your girlfriend. All right. We got our axle in the shop. What are we doing today, Jared? We are stripping the housings. We're going to pull the wheel bearings. We're going to drain the fluid, pull the mid diff, and we're going to get this thing buttoned up, get going. Freaking torn apart. Torn apart is what I hear. Freaking tear this thing down. I was just talking to Aaron about it, and uh, I'm really excited to see what he does with this whole thing. Uh, it's our job today to just get it torn down, so we'll see what happens from here. I've been listening to 90s rock all morning getting ready for this. Today is the day. Now is the time. Do you hear those church bells ringing? We're having ourselves a wedding. We're marrying the F450 axle that we got out of the junkyard the other day with the two and a half ton Rockwell axle that we sourced from Boyce Equipment. We've got to do some cutting. We got to do some slicing to get these things to one piece of equipment that we're gonna shove underneath that truck to make it a six by six. This is effectively what will make this truck a six by six. So get ready, ladies and gentlemen. This is the most interesting part of this build, I would say. We're gonna get this thing underneath that thing right now. Technically, we're aligned right now, able to start doing uh, some plate and fabrication work to make this permanent, which will be coming up next. like we're Canadian. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and connect our uh, flange, our custom flange joint here, and uh, we're gonna connect it to the housing, and then we're gonna box it in, and um, yeah, you'll see all that go down right now. Heck yeah, we're pumped. Pump, pump it up, Kyle. I hate when I say stuff on camera, because I'm gonna hate that later.
Asking, I don't go eat lunch with this guy for one day, dude, and we're like, we're fighting like we're in a relationship. <laughs> so it's basically all the tax are holding it. And when I do put heat in a certain area, there's already a bunch of tax around it. So it doesn't give it the warps. As long as we know this thing's moving, we know we're straight in there and everything's good to go. <laughs> so TJ's job for the afternoon is to just keep spinning that thing. I get to spin the shaft, baby. Hardest job here. And we just figured TJ was the best at it. <laughs> <laughs> it, takes real, it takes a real man to spin a shaft like that. <laughs> Dirty jokes, man, I don't know. Alright, so the guys have been building the intermediate axle for the 6x6 and it's just about done. Um, got a couple more things to do. We got to build a essentially a ring gear cover that goes up over the uh, back of the ring gear and then this is going to hang down towards the ground. This is the diff here which will normally be up top but you can imagine this going in the truck. We still got to put our suspension brackets on it and then we're going to get it actually up underneath the frame and uh, start getting everything mocked up, get the wheels and tires on it, get axle shafts made. This thing will start coming together real fast from this point on. This was one of the bigger uh, projects for our 6x6 just because there was a lot of unknowns. I think we're the first ones to build this hybrid Rockwell slash Dana S, I think 110 um, axle. I don't think I've seen anything like this before. Uh, I think it's going to solve a lot of uh, problems that I've seen with other 6x6 systems. So I'm excited to get this thing in there and see what see what it does but our next step basically from here is to get all the stuff you see here on the truck get coil over shocks on the truck um, get some axle shafts made and basically start driving this thing um, we got to do a little plumbing we got to do a little stuff here and there but we're on the downhill slope now so it's looking pretty good hell yeah 